a 72-year-old male resident of a long-term care facility is suspected to have a urinary tract infection. Which of the following manifestations should the nurse anticipate as common in older adults with urinary tract infections? A. Fever and chills. B. Superpubic tenderness. C. Hematuria. D. Confusion or altered mental status. The correct answer is. D. Confusion or altered mental status. Explanation. Older adults with urinary tract infections often present with atypical symptoms. Confusion or altered mental status, also known as delirium, is a common manifestation in this population. Fever and chills, suprapubic tenderness, and hematuria may also be present but are not as consistently seen in older adults with UTIs. The nurse should be vigilant for subtle changes in mental status in elderly patients and consider a UTI as a possible underlying cause. A 45-year-old male presents to the emergency department with severe colicky right flank pain that radiates to the groin. He reports a history of similar episodes in the past. On examination, the nurse notes costovertebral angle tenderness on the right side. A urinalysis reveals the presence of hematuria. Which of the following interventions should the nurse anticipate? A. Administering intravenous fluids. B. Initiating antibiotic therapy. C. Performing a renal biopsy. D. Administering over-the-counter pain medication. E. Arranging for lithotripsy. The correct answer is A. Administering intravenous fluids. Explanation. The patient's symptoms, including severe colicky flank pain, radiating pain to the groin, costovertebral angle tenderness, and hematuria, are indicative of a kidney stone, renal calculus. The priority intervention is to administer intravenous fluids to promote hydration and increase urine output, which can aid in the passage of the stone. Antibiotic therapy is not indicated unless there is evidence of infection. A renal biopsy is not necessary for the diagnosis of kidney stones. Over-the-counter pain medication may provide temporary relief, but the underlying cause needs to be addressed. Lithotripsy, a non-invasive procedure to break up kidney stones, may be considered if conservative measures fail. A 28-year-old female presents to the clinic with complaints of dysuria, frequent urination, and lower abdominal pain. She reports a history of recurrent urinary tract infections in the past. On urinalysis, leukocyte esterase and nitrites are positive. Based on these findings, what is the most appropriate nursing intervention? A. Encouraging increased fluid intake. B. Initiating antibiotic therapy. C. Administering over-the-counter pain medication. D. Scheduling a renal ultrasound. The correct answer is B, initiating antibiotic therapy. Explanation The patient's symptoms, along with positive leukocyte esterase and nitrites on urinalysis, are indicative of a urinary tract infection. Antibiotic therapy is the mainstay of treatment for UTIs to eliminate the causative bacteria and alleviate symptoms. Encouraging increased fluid intake is generally beneficial, but it alone is not sufficient to treat the infection. Over-the-counter pain medication may provide temporary relief of symptoms, but it does not address the underlying infection. A renal ultrasound is not indicated in the initial management of a UTI unless there are complicating factors or recurrent infections. A 60-year-old female with a history of recurrent kidney stones is seeking dietary advice to prevent further stone formation. Which of the following dietary modifications is most appropriate for preventing calcium oxalate stones? A. Limiting sodium intake. B. Increasing dietary calcium. C. Reducing protein intake. D. Avoiding foods high in oxalate. E. Consuming a low purine diet. The correct answer is D. Avoiding foods high in oxalate. Explanation Calcium oxalate stones are the most common type of kidney stones, and dietary modifications play a crucial role in prevention. Limiting sodium intake is beneficial to prevent certain types of stones, but it is not specific to calcium oxalate stones. Increasing dietary calcium actually helps prevent calcium oxalate stones by binding with oxalate in the gastrointestinal tract, reducing its absorption. 
reducing protein intake is more relevant for uric acid stones, and consuming a low-purine diet is important for preventing those stones. Avoiding foods high in oxalate, such as spinach, rhubarb, and chocolate, is recommended to reduce the risk of calcium oxalate stone formation. A 62-year-old male with a history of hypertension and diabetes mellitus is admitted to the hospital with acute renal failure. The nurse assesses the patient and notes elevated blood pressure, generalized edema, and decreased urine output. Laboratory results reveal increased serum creatinine and decreased glomerular filtration rate, GFR. Which of the following interventions should the nurse anticipate? A. Administering loop diuretics. B. Initiating angiotensin-converting enzyme, ACE, inhibitor therapy. C. Restricting dietary protein intake. D. Administering intravenous fluids. The correct answer is D. Administering intravenous fluids. Explanation. Acute renal failure is characterized by a sudden decline in kidney function, leading to fluid and electrolyte imbalances. The priority intervention is to restore and maintain adequate fluid volume to support renal perfusion and promote diuresis. Administering loop diuretics may be necessary if the patient has fluid overload despite fluid administration, but it is not the initial intervention. ACE inhibitors may be used in chronic kidney disease but are contraindicated in acute renal failure. Restricting dietary protein intake may be beneficial in some cases of chronic kidney disease but is not the primary intervention for acute renal failure. A 70-year-old male is diagnosed with acute renal failure and requires hemodialysis. The nurse is preparing to initiate hemodialysis and is explaining the procedure to the patient. Which of the following statements by the patient indicates an understanding of the teaching? A. I will need to restrict my fluid intake after hemodialysis. B. Hemodialysis will cure my kidney disease completely. C. I should take my regular medications before hemodialysis. D. The dialysis machine will remove excess glucose from my blood. The correct answer is C. I should take my regular medications before hemodialysis. Explanation It is important for patients undergoing hemodialysis to take their regular medications as prescribed, even on dialysis days. Hemodialysis helps remove waste products and excess fluid from the blood but does not cure kidney disease completely, so option B is incorrect. Fluid intake restrictions are typically imposed between hemodialysis sessions, not after the procedure, so option A is incorrect. The dialysis machine primarily removes waste products and excess electrolytes from the blood, not excess glucose, so option D is incorrect. A 58-year-old male with chronic renal failure is scheduled for hemodialysis. The nurse is reviewing the patient's laboratory results and notes a high potassium level of 6.2 milliequivalent/l. Which of the following interventions should the nurse anticipate? A. Administering intravenous calcium gluconate. B. Restricting dietary potassium intake. C. Initiating treatment with a loop diuretic D. Administering sodium bicarbonate. E. Preparing to administer kaexalate. The correct answer is E. Preparing to administer kaexalate. Explanation Hyperkalemia is a common electrolyte imbalance in chronic renal failure due to impaired potassium excretion. Kaexalate, a cation exchange resin, helps remove excess potassium from the body by exchanging sodium ions for potassium ions in the intestine, facilitating potassium elimination through the stool. Intravenous calcium gluconate, option A, is used to counteract the effects of hyperkalemia on cardiac conduction but does not address the underlying potassium imbalance. Restricting dietary potassium intake, option B, is important in managing hyperkalemia, but it alone may not be sufficient in the acute setting. Loop diuretics, option C, are not effective in removing potassium and are more commonly used for fluid overload. Sodium bicarbonate, option D, may be used to manage metabolic acidosis but does not specifically target hyperkalemia. A 45-year-old female is admitted to the hospital with acute renal failure secondary to sepsis. The nurse is monitoring the patient's laboratory values and notes an increased blood urea nitrogen, BUN, level. 
which of the following physiological processes primarily contributes to the elevation of BUN in acute renal failure? A. Increased glomerular filtration rate. B. Enhanced tubular reabsorption of urea. C. Decreased production of urea by the liver. D. Impaired release of urea by the kidneys. The correct answer is B. Enhanced tubular reabsorption of urea. Explanation. In acute renal failure, there is a decrease in glomerular filtration rate, GFR, leading to impaired excretion of urea. As a compensatory mechanism, the renal tubules reabsorb more urea, resulting in an elevated blood urea nitrogen, BUN, level. Increased GFR, option A, would lead to decreased BUN levels. Decreased production of urea by the liver, option C, and impaired release of urea by the kidneys, option D, are not primary mechanisms contributing to the elevation of BUN in acute renal failure. 30-year-old male with a history of kidney stones presents to the clinic for a follow-up visit. The nurse is discussing lifestyle modifications to prevent stone recurrence. Which of the following statements by the patient indicates an understanding of the teaching? A. I should drink at least 2 liters of water per day. B. I can continue my high-protein diet. C. Taking vitamin C supplements can help prevent stone formation. D. Regularly consuming carbonated beverages is beneficial. E. Limiting my intake of citrus fruits is important. The correct answer is A. I should drink at least 2 liters of water per day. Explanation Adequate hydration is crucial in preventing kidney stone recurrence. Drinking at least 2 liters of water per day helps dilute urine and reduce the concentration of stone-forming substances. A high-protein diet can increase the risk of certain types of stones, so it is not recommended. Excessive intake of vitamin C supplements can increase the risk of oxalate stones, so it is contraindicated. Regularly consuming carbonated beverages can increase the risk of stone formation. Limiting the intake of citrus fruits is not necessary. A 35-year-old pregnant woman presents to the obstetric clinic with symptoms of a urinary tract infection. The nurse is educating the patient about preventive measures. Which of the following statements by the patient indicates an understanding of the teaching? A. I should avoid drinking cranberry juice during pregnancy. B. Wiping from back to front after using the toilet is recommended. C. I can use scented feminine hygiene products to maintain freshness. D. Emptying my bladder before and after sexual intercourse is important. The correct answer is D. Emptying my bladder before and after intercourse is important. Explanation Pregnant women are at an increased risk of urinary tract infections due to hormonal changes and anatomical factors. Emptying the bladder before and after sexual intercourse helps flush out bacteria and reduces the risk of infection. Drinking cranberry juice is beneficial in preventing UTIs as it contains compounds that inhibit bacterial adhesion, so the statement in option A is incorrect. Wiping from front to back after using the toilet is recommended to prevent the spread of bacteria from the anal area to the urethra, so option B is incorrect. Scented feminine hygiene products can irritate the urethra and increase the risk of infection, so option C is incorrect.